Bible study this morning. Will you turn in your Bible with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I'm glad you're watching today and I recommend that you get your Bible and study with us. Uh, check the references as we give them in the scripture and if you have a pencil and a piece of paper, write them down and study them for yourselves. Today I want to talk to you about uh, <clears throat> righteous works and basically the work of the Lord. In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, would you read with me from uh, verse uh, 11. He said, For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, uh, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, and I have Apollos, and I have Cephas, and I have Christ. Verse 13, is Christ divided? And of course the answer is no. Was Paul crucified for you? And the answer is no. Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? And the answer is no. And he said, I thank God that I baptized none of you but Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that I had baptized in mine own name. And I baptized also the household of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptized any other. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with the wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. Now the important thing is the preaching of the cross. Everything else, whatever the doctrine might be, in this age that we're in today, the thing that matters is the preaching of the cross. Paul said, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Why rightly divide the word of truth? In order to get the word of truth. In order to separate the different gospels. The preaching of the cross is different than the gospel of the kingdom. Peter had no idea that Jesus Christ was going to die on a cross. In fact, Jesus Christ told him in Matthew 16 that he was going up to Jerusalem and he was going to be taken by wicked hands and crucified. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. And then in the garden of Gethsemane, when they came to take the Lord Jesus, Peter pulled a sword and began to fight. He was going to stop the crucifixion. He did not believe in the cross. Paul said, we glory in the cross. Peter did not. So there's obviously a difference there in their preaching. In Acts chapter 2, he preached a murder indictment against the nation Israel. He said, you by wicked hands have taken the Lord and you've crucified him, but God hath raised him up. And so then they said, uh, what shall we do? And he said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sins. Peter had no idea that Jesus Christ had died for the sins of those people there. Neither did he in Acts chapter 3 are in Acts chapter 10. And people can argue, it doesn't make any difference, uh, present any argument you want. If he would have known that Jesus Christ died for the sins of Cornelius, I'm sure that he would have told him so. But he didn't tell him any such thing. But I want to tell you, according to the ministry of the Apostle Paul, according to the revelation given to the Apostle Paul, Jesus Christ died for you. And the way of salvation where you're concerned is the way of the cross. There is no other salvation for you. And all your righteous works are no more than loss. They're no more, according to the Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 3, than dung. Check it out and see. Your righteous works are going to get you nowhere. The Bible says, not by works of righteousness which we've done, but according to His mercy He saved us. The preaching of the cross 
is to them that perish foolishness. Why? Because men cannot understand why that Jesus Christ dying on a cross would have any effect. Why the cross? The Bible said that he was reckoned among the transgressors. Jesus Christ was not a criminal, and yet he was declared to be a criminal for us. And the Bible said that God made him to be sin for us. Him who knew no sin became our sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. <clears throat> so what's the answer? The answer for your problem is that Jesus Christ died for your crimes. Jesus Christ died on a cross. Crosses were for criminals. Jesus Christ died as a criminal. He died as a sinner for your sins. Jesus Christ died instead of you. Jesus Christ died in behalf of you. He took your crimes upon himself. He took your sins upon himself and paid for them on Calvary's cross. Turn in your Bible, please, to Romans and look in Romans chapter 6. In Romans chapter 6. Notice in verse 23, Romans 6, 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I've asked people, what is the righteous work of the Lord? And they say, well, he kept the law for us. <clears throat> Look in Romans chapter 8. Sometimes people claim this. In Romans chapter 8, verse 2, For the law, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, hath made me free from the law of sin and death, for what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. You see, there are those that believe that we fulfill the righteousness of the law as a child of God. In other words, we believe in Christ, and then believing in him, we fulfill the righteousness of the law by walking in the Spirit. But that's not true. And then there are those that believe that Jesus Christ was baptized for them and then lived for them. But, beloved, Jesus Christ didn't live for you. He died for you. Some people think that since Jesus Christ told John that, in effect, he said it behooves us to fulfill all righteousness, and he's referring to baptism, they believe that Jesus Christ was baptized in their stead. But that's nonsense. That won't work. The wages of sin is death. The payoff for sin is death. The charges for your sin is death. What does God charge you with as a result of sin? Well, he charges you with death. How are you going to accomplish that? Now, these things are laid out in the Scripture in different ways. I want you to notice something back here. Turn back with me, please, to Exodus, and look in Exodus chapter 22. <clears throat> Exodus chapter 22. In Exodus 22, verse 1, If a man shall steal an ox or a sheep and kill it or sell it, he shall restore five oxen for an ox, and four sheep for a sheep. In other words, he's to make restitution. He's to repay for that which he took. There's a payoff. Notice in verse 5, If a man shall cause a field or vineyard to be eaten, and shall put it put in his beast and shall feed in another man's field of the best of his own field and of the best of his own vineyard shall he make restitution. In other words, he pays back. He pays off his debt. <clears throat> uh, verse 6, If fire break out and catch in thorns so that the stacks of corn or the standing corn of the field be consumed therewith, he that kindled the fire shall surely make restitution. 
In other words, if you burn something that belongs to another, burn his field or whatever, then you have to make restitution for that which you burned. You have to pay it all back. You have to square it somewhere. You have to make it right. That's the term we use today. You have to right the wrong. Turn in your Bible, please, to Leviticus. And notice in Leviticus chapter 19. Leviticus chapter 19. In Leviticus 19, he said, You shall do no unrighteousness. Uh, in simple terms, that's that which is wrong. You shall do no wrong. You're not to wrong anybody. You're not to wrong God, and you're not to wrong your fellow man. <clears throat> I mean, that's simple southern terms. Do right. Don't do wrong. Do right. Adam did wrong. God Almighty said, Adam, you can eat of every tree in the Garden of Eden except one, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Thou shalt not eat thereof, for in the day thou eateth thereof, thou shalt surely die. Adam did wrong. He disobeyed God. He ate of the tree of knowledge when he was forbidden to do it. He did wrong. That's called sin. Back in the passage, verse 35, you shall do no unrighteousness. You not do that which is wrong. In judgment, in meteor, in weight or in measure. Just balances, just weights, a just ephah, and a just hen shall you have. I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt. Now that's clear. In other words, on your scales, you're to have just balances. You're to balance out the scales in your life. If I put on the board up here, <clears throat> and I say that this represents a pair of scales. All right. These scales have a, have a point up here somewhere which makes everything even. On this side of these scales over here is what is known as sin. Uh, as I've been referring to it, is that which is wrong. Adam did wrong. Adam disobeyed God. Adam sinned. And the Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verse 12, by one man sin entered in the world and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. In other words, the nature to do wrong entered into you through Adam's wrong. And therefore you were born in sin and born with a nature about you that rather do wrong than do right. Therefore, you have to get control of your life to do right. If the occasion comes where you can do wrong and benefit by it, or do right and lose by it, your nature says, do wrong and help yourself. Your nature says, benefit yourself. Get all you can while the getting's good. That's what your nature says to you, and if you deny that, you're just lying to yourself. The Bible's clear that that's the way it is with you. Paul said, in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. He said, I'm carnal, sold under sin. He said, when I would do good, evil is present with me. And on and on and on. So it is with you. You're bent to do wrong. In fact, much of the wrong that you do, you enjoy to the fullest. You love it. That's the reason you do it. Because you enjoy it. To stop doing it and do right would be painful to you. To stop doing it and do right would cause sadness in your life, you think. On the other side over here is righteousness. And I'll just call it right. What is righteousness? Well, it's that which is right. 
it's that which is straight. It's not crooked. It's not iniquity. On this side is iniquity. On this side, righteousness. On this side is sin. On this side, righteousness. On this side is wrong. On this side is right. Do right. Just balances you're to have. In other words, you're justify, you're to justify it, you're to level it out, you're to even the thing out. You were born wrong. You were born in sin. You were born in iniquity. How are you going to justify that? How are you going to write that? Come on now. Be honest with yourself. How are you going to write the fact that you are by nature wrong? How are you going to change being what you are by nature? Oh, you can stop doing some of the bad things you've been doing, but you can't stop being what you are. You are wrong. You were born in sin. Sin dwells in your flesh, and you're hell-bent to do wrong. And any time you do right, you do right because you get control of yourself and control the urge to do wrong. So what are you going to do about it? Got a problem, you know that? The world's got a problem. The religious world is telling you that if you'll do righteous works, then God will receive you. <laughs> is piling righteous works on this side going to level the thing off over here? Let's try again. Turn in your Bible, please, to the book of Proverbs. In Proverbs... And uh, notice, please, in Proverbs chapter 19. Proverbs chapter 19. And notice in, uh, I'm sorry, make it 20. Proverbs chapter 20. And notice in verse 23. Divers' weights are an abomination unto the Lord and a false balance is not good. Turn please to Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs 11. In Proverbs 11, notice verse 1. A false balance is abomination to the Lord. Did you see that? A false balance is abomination of the Lord. Now wait a minute. I just read back there in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, where it said, the wages of sin is death. God said, Adam, as sure as you eat of this tree, you shall surely die. The wages of sin is death. The balancing of the scales is death. And a false balance is abomination to God. Therefore, all your righteous works are abomination to God. Oh, yes. People can kick and scream and they can yell and pull their hair if they want. False balances are an abomination to God. You're not balancing the scales by doing so-called righteous works. All your righteous works are unrighteous in the eyes of God. Turn in your Bible, please, to Romans. I look in Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. In Romans chapter 3, start reading with me in verse 9. What then? Are we better than they? No in no wise, for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they're all under sin. <laughs> Paul said, I'm carnal, sold under sin. All are under sin. You're under sin. You're under the dominion of sin. You're under the dominion of wrong. In your flesh dwells no good thing. Uh, verse 10, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Physically, visibly speaking, you're not righteous. You're bad. You're a sinner. You're a vile sinner walking around in a vile body. God said it's vile. It's vile. 
And notice in verse 11, there is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. When you say that you sought God at an old-fashioned altar, according to the passage, you're lying. In other words, you're laying lies on the other side of the scales. That's false balances. Or work. Uh, notice in uh, verse 13, their throat, I'm sorry, verse 12, they're all gone out of the way. They're together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. So you pile them on over here. You put on this side over here, repentance. You repent of all the wrong that you've done to other people. But that doesn't bring the scales over to the point up here. You know why? If you could repent of all that you've, run, that you've done wrong toward God and whatever and bring the scales up to even God would be wrong to have brought His Son to death at the cross. God would have been wrong to have forsaken His Son and delivered him son, His Son up for you and brought about the death of His Son at Calvary to pay for your sins if you could repent of your sins and balance the scale. So what have we got on this side over here? The only thing that will please God and, and balance the scales in God's sight is death. And that death has to be the death of the cross. There is no other. And therefore, if you balance the scales on your own, you must die. Behold the phone. If you die in your sins, you're going to end up in hell. There is no hope for you as long as you keep trying to do right to balance the scale. There is no hope for you as long as you keep going to the altar and repent of your sins and trying to pray for at the altar and leaving your sins at the altar and trying to square the thing without trusting Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. You will never get it right. And whatever you're doing is abomination in the eyes of God. Your balances are unjust. What will please God? Well, it pleased God to deliver up His Son for you. So the cross has to fit on this side. But hold on. Whoa, wait a minute. I'm talking to somebody right now that you say, okay, I believe in Jesus Christ and I believe that He died for me at Calvary, but there's more to it than that. Yeah, what else is there? Well, once you trust Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you've got to be baptized, and you've got to join the church, and you've got to keep the commandments, and you've got to do and on and on and on. You see, you're not trusting Jesus Christ. Therefore, the cross is invisible in your scales. God can't see the cross in your life. If God saw the cross in your life, you would have have died to your efforts to balance the thing by your works. All your righteousnesses are as filthy rags. They're a stench in the nostrils of a holy and a righteous God. So you just pile it on up there. You go into the baptismal pool and you think that repentance and baptism is going to level the thing out when God requires death. You say, but oh, brother, more. Baptism represents death. <laughs> oh, my. There's only one death that will suffice. It's the death of the cross. It's the death of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ didn't live a holy and a righteous life for you. Bless your soul, he died for you. The life of Jesus Christ in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is not put to your account. It's his death that's put to your account when you receive him as your Lord and Savior. There isn't anything else that'll suffice. God said to right the wrong. Right is death. You gotta die. But if you physically die, you're going to go to hell. So therefore, you need a substitute. You need someone to die in your stead. And there are very few people that I'm talking to right now that honestly from the bottom of your heart believe that Jesus Christ at Calvary died for all your sins. 
There's some of you listening to me right now, you can't get that thing right. You've never gotten it right. You're not going to get it right today. You're just going to keep on and say, yeah, I believe in Jesus. But deep down in your heart, you believe that your righteous works are gaining salvation for you. You're doomed. All you got on this side is filth. You haven't got the cross over there. You haven't got the death of Jesus Christ over there. If you had the death of Jesus Christ over there, you'd quit trying. But you ain't quit trying yet. There are some of you over there that are listening to me that you've had the message of lost believers preached unto you and you've got fighting mad about it. Somebody else came along and soothed your conscience. You see, you joined some Baptist, Methodist, or Presbyterian church at some time in the past. Uh, you repented of something wrong you'd done back there. But after you got in that church and began to do good works and all that kind of business, you thought that was all right. Somebody came along and preached lost believers message unto you that is preached that an individual can believe in the Lord and still be lost you got fighting mad about that and then one day you, de you decided that maybe that you really hadn't been saved back there and so somebody else came along later though and kind of soothed the thing and they said well that fellow just preaching something that's wrong to you and he's just trying to get you on his side and blah 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 why because he got a problem himself you know what the righteous work of Jesus Christ in your behalf is, bless your soul, it's death. Jesus Christ died the death of the cross. You put the death of the cross on this side over here in the scales of balance, and God Almighty will reckon you just. God will reckon you justified in His sight. God will reckon you righteous in His sight. Why? When He looks at you and looks at the scales of your life, He sees the cross there. He sees the wrong balanced with the death of Christ. He sees the sin balanced with the death of Christ. He sees the iniquity balanced with the death of Christ. He sees everything in your life balanced with one single act. What is that? It's Jesus Christ dying at Calvary for your sin. God made him to be your sin. Why will you not trust him? Why do you keep on fooling around with this thing? Why do you keep trying and saying that some way, somehow, I'm going to accomplish it? You're not going to accomplish it. You're going to fall off into hell someday. What's your answer? Trust Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, believing that he did, in fact, pay for all your sins at Calvary. He died. The righteous work of the Lord is dying for you. He died for you. He performed a work for you. What? He died the death that was put to your charge for your sins. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ.